never an excited time whenever a loved one passes away, and it's hard. But it's good to also be able to comfort those that are grieving. And again, I do indeed thank you for your prayers. I believe in the power of prayer, and I hope you do as well. We've been discussing the past several Sundays, uh, with the exception of last Sunday, regarding a series on worship. And it is important to worship God. Worship is our, is, our, is our giving thanks back to Him for what He's done for us, and to give, it gives Him glory. And that's the, the purpose of our worship, is to glorify our Father in Heaven. One of the a- actions or avenues, as they say, of, of our worship, and even in the life of a Christian, is the, the idea of prayer. And today we're going to focus upon six principles of prayer. The Christian is dependent upon God, and one way he does does that is by having an active prayer life. No child of God can survive without prayer in his life. Where would we be without prayer? Prayer is a needed thing in the life of a Christian. Consider some people of God that prayed. You consider Hannah, David, Jeremiah, Daniel, Jesus... Peter, Paul, Stephen, James, and you can continue to go on and on and on and look at the lives, of the prayers of the people in the Bible. Especially Jesus. Jesus often spoke with his Father. He found time in his life to pray because he saw the power of prayer. And we need to, as Christians, see the power of prayer, not only public in our public prayers, but also in our private prayers. Prayer is important. And so we're going to discuss six principles of prayer. Number one is the privilege of prayer. We are privileged to come before the throne of God. We must never underestimate the privilege that we have to communicate with our God to deliver our heart to Him of our needs and also our thankfulness to Him. Prayer is indeed a privilege. Consider, if you consider the differences between the Old Testament and the New Testament, under the Old Testament, you could, the only way one can go to the, to the Father is through the Levitical priesthood that would offer incense. But under the New Testament, priest, uh, under New Testament system, according to 2 Peter, you and I are priests, and we have the privilege of coming before the throne of God and praying. Of course, that's given within the spiritual blessings of Christ. Ephesians 1 3. All spiritual blessings are in Christ. The Christian today is heard by the Heavenly Father. The righteous are heard. Psalm 34, 15. Prayer of the righteous is heard. God hears the prayer. I think about David in Psalm 116. I love the Lord. Why? Because he has heard my prayer and my supplications. David knew the power of prayer because he experienced it. Think about us as we pray to our Father, the privilege that we have to go to God our Father in prayer. We should take those moments in in our life every day. In fact, I believe it it would be effective to begin our day and to end our day with prayer. And because you can thank God to help you through that day and at the end thank, thank thank Him for all the blessings you've received in that day. Amongst many other things, and we'll, we'll give more upon these things as we continue the lesson. But consider that prayer is a privilege among many other things that we have in our spiritual life. For worship itself is a privilege. But think about worshiping our God in prayer. Consider also, number two, the persons of prayer. The per- the prayer our prayers are addressed to the Father in heaven. Go back even to even to what Jesus said in Matthew 6. Prayer is something that doesn't come automatically. No one is born automatic. I know exactly how to pray. Is that what to pray for? It's, it's a taught thing. And the disciples of Jesus were taught how to pray. Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6, verses 9 and following, He says, Pray then in this way, Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Think about the personal prayer. Think about the Father who we're praying to, or to whom we're praying. 
Look, our Father is good, and He gives everything good from above, according to the book of James. He gives good gifts. Every good gift is from above, comes in the Father of lights. So there's no shadow of turning, James 1. Think about how great God is. And when we approach God in prayer, we, we are addressing our prayers to the Father, the very one that created us, the one who knows us, who knows the hearts of man. We are addressing our prayers to God the Father. Not only that, we're giving, we're giving honor to His name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. God's, God deserves that honor because He's God. Simply because of His character, of who He is. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And at this point, the kingdom had not, had not come, come into yet. Hadn't, Jesus hadn't died yet. And so he asked, pray, your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Nothing wrong to pray that, our, that, 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 our, that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's, that's, that's an example of how to pray here. Give us this day our daily bread. We serve a God who is willing to provide. That's what providence is. God provides. God provides our daily things, things that we need. He also provides us, the child of God, with the things he needs spiritually. Give us this day our daily bread. I sense in this, as Jesus is, is, is teaching a model for how to pray, to focus on the needs of the day. Sometimes we are focused too much upon beyond the day and, and forget that day. I can, you consider the end of chapter, Matthew chapter 6 about where, G, where Jesus is talking about putting, our, putting God first, seek the kingdom of God first. Don't worry, don't worry, worry about these things. Verse 34, he says, Do not worry about tomorrow, for, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Think about today. I like my dad, my, my dad taught me while, while I was young. He says, Take it one day at a time. Take it one day at a time. Now, there's nothing wrong with praying about events in the future, but don't be so over-focused about that that we forget the necessity of that day. There must be a balance. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Here is a character of humility. Here is a character of humility as we go to God in prayer. Forgive us our debts. Forgive us as we have also forgiven our debtors. Now I mean that. Is that true in our life when we, pray, when we pray to God, forgive us as we've forgiven others? That must be true. Otherwise, we're praying a vain, vain prayer. Let that be true. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. We should pray daily to help us, as Peter would say, to grow in grace. In the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Second Peter three three eighteen, we need help. We don't. We don't. We haven't made it. We haven't arrived, as it, as it were. We are constantly growing. We are constantly needing work, and God will help us in our temptations. He is able. Otherwise, why would why would Jesus give us this example? Not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. As a matter of fact, God never leaves the child of God to temptation. God cannot be tempted with evil, and no, no does He attempt anyone with evil. James 1, verses 12 and following. But God, that's a similar to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. If you look with me there as we're thinking about this, it is important to pray to overcome the things that we're tempted by. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. But notice this. God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. I think that's a good parallel with, the, with that idea. Don't lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. God is able to help us in our time of temptation to overcome it. Here's the way He provides the way of escape. And the biggest weapon He has given us in that way of escape is His Word that tells us, and we should stand in it daily to continue. As David would say, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. 
God's Word helps us and pray that as we, as we go through our lives to deliver us from evil. For yours, and then in the, it begins with honoring the Father, and the model prayer end, ends with honor of the, of the Father. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And that's a good model prayer. You have the, the persons of prayer, the Father in heaven, but you also have the disciple of Jesus. Look, look at Luke 11, 1 through 4. And it happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place, after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, this is where I thought about the disciples asking him how to pray, Lord, teach us. Prayer, again, is a, thought, is a taught thing. Lord, teach us to pray just as John also taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we, also are, are, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation, which is similar to what he said in the model prayer in Matthew. But prayer is something that is taught. Your prayer now may not be the same way you prayed the first time you prayed. Why? Because you grow in your prayer. You, you, you develop that, your prayer life as you grow. And, 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 it, and it continues to, it always should continue to improve. And, to, we should, and not just in prayer, but in every aspect of our spiritual life, we should seek to improve and to be the best that we could be for God. The disciple of Jesus should involve prayer in his life. And then consider also the Son of God in prayer. Jesus, consider Jesus as our advocate. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, I am writing these things to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father. That word advocate is like a lawyer term. It's a term for a lawyer. Uh, he's, he's standing, he's pleading for the child of God. He's standing there pleading the case of the child, or, the, or the, the, the defendant. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he himself is the propitiation. He's the mercy seat for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. Jesus is our advocate. He is our intercessor. Romans 8 and verse 34. Romans 8 and verse 34. Who is the one who condemns Christ Jesus? Is he who died? Yes, rather, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. He is our intercessor. Consider the passage that we that we read in First Timothy uh, that we read for our scripture reading, First Timothy chapter two. He is the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. The Son of God is our advocate, he is our intercessor. And consider also the Holy Spirit as our as as an intercessor. Romans eight, verse twenty six and twenty seven. All three members of the Godhead are involved in our prayer line. All three personalities. Romans 8, verses 26 and 27. Have you ever been in times of your life where you don't know exactly what to pray for? Perhaps a time you're going through grief and you just don't have the words to say to, to the Father to help you go through this grief or whatever it is in life, the situation? Sometimes it may just be, Father, help me with what I'm going through. I don't have the words to say to you, but you know what I'm going through. Those are very appropriate words. Notice, notice, notice this in Romans 8, 26 and 27. And in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. God knows what we need. He knows what we're thinking. He knows what we need better than what, better than what we can, in better, and better ways than we can express. There are times in life when we pray to God, we don't know exactly what to pray. But God knows. 
God knows. Prayer is a privilege. It's a blessing. And not, on, not only is God, the whole Godhead involved in our prayer life, but we should be involved in our prayer life as well. That's why Paul would say to pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 He doesn't say continue a long, continuous prayer throughout your life and never stop. He's saying never cease your praying life. Never cease communication with the Father. Talk to God. But also let's think about the, pur- the purpose of prayer. What is the purpose of prayer? Well, number one, it's approaching God and talking to God. Prayer is a line of communication between the child of God and his Father. Never, never stop that line of communication. Never stop calling. For example, those of you that may have your earthly father still here, if you never talk to your father... Would that, would that be a sign of a good relationship? Of course not. But if you talk to your father often and, and those that are around you know about it, they would know how he cares for his father because he tra- as much as he can, he tries to communicate with the father. That shows the child of God leaning and trusting upon the father when we communicate our needs to him. That's given us, that's given us our trust to him with our needs. And that's, a, that's one of the purposes of our prayer, approaching and talking to God. He's the Father. Number two, asking for forgiveness. That's, that's 1 John. We must be willing to confess our sins to God. But notice what John says in 1 John 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is faithful. When we pray to God to forgive us of our sins, it's it's, it's, it's forgiven. God is faithful and just to forgive us. And that should be an assurance for us as we constantly lean our life upon God, as we constantly lean our, our spiritual life to Him, our physical life as well. Number three, asking for blessing. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I love what the Apostle Paul wrote. Of course, he was inspired by the Spirit. He says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Don't forget to thank God in our prayers. Even when we need something, don't forget to thank God. We shouldn't just go to the Father to communicate with Him when we need something. Go back to the, the illustration of the child and the father communicating. If the child only, only talks to the father when he needs something, that's not going to do good for the relationship. He should, he, should, he should also talk to the father about, hey, how are you doing? I care about you. Thank you for bringing me up right. Thank you for all the things you've helped me with. Don't be afraid to do that. Amen. Do, that with the, do, that, do that with the father. He gives us so much. We, we must be thankful. Child of God shouldn't be ungrateful. Be anxious for nothing but everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. And notice this. Have you ever had a heavy burden on, on, on your mind? And when you go to God in prayer and pray about it, it seems like a peace comes across your mind. <clears throat> And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That trust that the child of God has with the Father, with His his needs, causes the child of God to have peace in Christ Jesus. Because we know that regardless if we get it our way or not, God knows best. And He'll do what's right. And He's able to help us in our life. Don't, don't under, again, do not underestimate the power of prayer. <clears throat> don't forget to ask for blessings. And again, don't forget to thank God. Don't be like the, the other nine lepers that, ne- that never came back and thanked Jesus. Be like the one that came back and said thank you. Amen. Thank God. Thank you for, for sending your Son for me. That while I was ungodly, you died for me. Thank you for doing that. 
Thank you for the blessings that you give me every day. Thank you for the privilege of being with my church family. Thank you for giving me a home. Thank you for preparing a place for me for, when, when, uh, for after my life is over, as I will faithful to death. I will hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thank you for that promise. Just thank God for the things that we have in life. And then also there are prayers of intercession. Asking or praying on behalf of others. John 17 is a good example of intercession. When Jesus said, I pray not for these alone. He, he, prayed, for, he prayed for others. He didn't just pray for Himself. He constantly prayed for His disciples. And for all of us, including you and me, in that same prayer. Whenever someone is struggling, the best thing sometimes that we can say is, I'm pray I'll pray for you. Let me pray for you. I've, I've determined to do something in my life. If you, if you follow me on Facebook, I have been, for the past week or so, every day I've made it a mission to post, how can I pray for you today? Because I know the power of prayer, and I know that there are people that are needing prayers. And it will help them to know someone's praying for them. Someone cares about them so much that they're willing to pray for them. That's what it says to, to the relationship with that brother or sister or that other person in Christ. When they know that you're praying for them. I think about times when my family were, were in the hospital. My grandmother was in the hospital. Especially my, mom, my mom's mom. They were, they would be, they would be, she would be basically car bombed, if you will. She would get cars, she had the cars, had the cars, and everyone on the, almost everyone on the site were, 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 were praying for you, want you to get better, and we love you. And that of someone that's in that situation to know they have brethren from the congregation, and she would even receive uh, cars from congregations around the United States and the world. To know that you have brethren you've never even met praying for you. And that's something that will uplift you as you're laying in a situation like that. And not even that, you don't even have to be in the hospital when that happened. If you're going through, a, going through a struggle and you know somebody, even if it's just one person praying for you, that uplifts you to know someone else cares about you so much to go to God on your behalf. But don't forget to go to God yourself, too. Prayer is powerful. It is powerful. And it should be in the life of the Christian. Not only that, but think about the places of prayer. There are private prayers, James 5 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him. Anointing. Have you noticed, have you noticed something? If someone is, is going through something and the whole church right at that moment prays for that person? I think about it, I'll, this, is come, this just comes to mind, I don't know why, but oftentimes you visit the sick in hospitals. It's often a joy to sit there, to stand there and pray for them. That room full of prayer. Mm -hmm. Even, even in, in the church when we come together, if someone has a need, let's stop and pray for you. And the whole church stops and prays. What will that say to that person that's going to that need? Hey, this is a family that cares about me. That's right. That doesn't mean that we have to every time someone we have to stop service and do that. That's not what I'm saying. Never, never cease to pray for that person. When you go home, still pray for that person. Keep them in mind. Because we must see the need of the power of prayer. There's private prayers. And I'll tell you this. There's a prayer over him, anointing with him the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will save the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Is prayer effective? James says it is. James says it can accomplish much. Prayer is powerful. But again, the prayer offered in faith. That goes back to James chapter 1. If any of them among you lacks wisdom, hey, do you know how to do you not know how to handle a situation? Ask God. What does he say about that prayer? Let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sand tossed to and fro. We must be confident in our in going to God in prayer. 
trusting Him with our needs, understanding that He will answer the best way possible. And even if it doesn't, uh, even if that prayer is not the way I think it is, God knows best. There are, there are plenty of times in my life, and I hope it's, and I know it's true in yours, where your prayer may have not answered the exact way you wanted it, but it, but it, when, it, but when it was answered, it was answered the best way for you, because God knows you. God searches the hearts. God knows me. God knows what I need better than I know myself. There are private prayers, but there's also public prayers. And that goes back to 2 Timothy 2. Or 1 Timothy 2, excuse me. In verse 8, Therefore I want the men in every place to pray. Prayer should be involved in our worship service. And I'm glad that we have prayers. And we, and we, and we see the power of prayer. I want men in every place to pray. Lifting up holy hands. Now, there's a lot of conundrum on holy hands. Men. But here's what it means. It means to have a holy life. Have a holy life. And with the right mind, with the right attitude. There is, there is no such thing as, uh, as, a, as a certain prayer position, prayer position that you have to, have to have in order to be pleasing to God. As long as reverence is given to Him in our prayer. In our life. Is holy. For example, you can pray while driving home. I hope you don't bow your head and close your eyes while you're driving down the road. If you're praying to God as you're driving home, that would, that would not be wise. But to know that we can go to God and pray at any time, we give Him glory as we do so. Amen. Prayer should be involved in the worship service. Public. It was done in the early church, Acts 27 35. Consider, consider what's written there. Acts 27, 35. And having said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of all, and he broke it and began to eat. Of course, this would more than likely be the Lord's Supper, but it gives the example, he gave thanks in the presence of all. We have an example of praying in the middle of the assembly there. And so you have private and public prayer. But then also consider number five, the power of prayer. Again, the, the effect of prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. It's powerful. Consider also Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now to him who is able. Is God able? Amen. Yes, he is. Now to him who is able to do. Notice this. Notice how Paul describes how, God, how, how able God is. Able to do what? Far more abundantly Beyond all that we ask or understand. Notice how Paul describes what, uh, how God is able to help us. Far more ab abundantly beyond all that we ask or understand. According to the power that works within us. To Him be the glory in the church. And in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. God is, is able to do beyond what we can even comprehend in our mind. God is powerful. Here's a question. How big is our God? How big do you consider God over the world and over the things of the world? The things that cause us to fall. Is God able to deliver you from that? How big is God? Consider David when he came up against Goliath. Did David... Where was David like those in the book of Numbers that said, we're not able to take this army. No, David said, I come in the name of the, God, in the, name of the living God. David saw that God was bigger than that giant that was standing in the way. Right. And he knew that God was with him. And I'm not, I'm not saying that if we have some bully or somebody that, that God's going to all of a sudden strike him down. But the, the principle of applying that God is bigger than us, God is bigger than our issues. God is able. God is powerful. That's how big God is. 
God has done, just consider what God has done for us. God has done everything possible for man that He can. Let us try to do the same. And number, and number six. I don't have time to go through this in depth, but you, I have a handout in the foyer if you want to pick up on your way, way, way out that has these. We're just going to go through it for time's sake. Just go through these really quickly. You can put this, this could be a lesson in itself, but number one, relax. Relax. Number two, schedule a time. Jesus scheduled time in, in, in his life to pray and make time for prayer. Find a quiet place. It's easier to go to God sometimes when you're when you're when you're when you're a place where you're alone and you can gather your thoughts. I'm not saying not pray in a crowd of people, but but it's oftentimes you, you can you can get more out in your mind. You can you can concentrate even more. Find a quiet place. Perhaps read a personal prayer from someone or read even a psalm. There are a lot of prayers in the Psalms. You could even take some of those words that's in the Psalms and, and pray them back. You can identify with the psalmist. Hey, I'm going through this, this struggle. God, help me. And that would, be a, that would be an effective thing to do. Reflect on what you need. Think about what you need. And be sure to give it to Him. Focus on thankfulness more than neediness. Be sure, to, as, as Paul would say, I thank God always. <coughs> always thank God. Make it meaningful. Make it come from the heart. All of our prayers should be from the heart. Take lessons learned from your personal prayer life and implement that into public prayers, not the other way around. That's, that's another thing to, to learn. Pray. Don't preach. Don't write an essay. Don't rant. Let it be from the heart. You're going to God, the Father. Right. Our prayers should be meaningful. And number ten, accept your own weaknesses. Trust and rely on God's strength. Proverbs 3, 5 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Look to God in our prayers. Prayer is certainly a powerful thing. No wonder... Paul said pray without, without ceasing. There are but two ways we communicate with God. From His written word to us, and number two is our prayers to Him. Let us, as Paul would say, pray without ceasing. Continue our prayer life. There may be someone here who has a need. Maybe one needs to obey the gospel. Do you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He is Lord? Are you willing to change your mind, and that is repentance? Are you willing to confess that He is Lord, that He's the Son of God? Are you willing to be baptized into Christ through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord? The resurrection makes it, is what makes it powerful. His blood that washes us away. We are saved by the blood of Jesus and raised to walk in the newness of life. Perhaps you've done, you've done that and you are struggling in our, our need of prayers. If you have a need, please come now as we stand, as we sing.